<laughs> All right, next comic's a very funny guy. Give it up for my man, Luke Stein. <laughs> Close. <laughs> so my face is red, you know, it's always been pretty red, you know, it's used to be kind of cute when I was a kid and now people think I need to sit down. <laughs> when I was a kid, um, I had trouble crossing monkey bars, right, and uh, my dad hated that, he hated it. He used to hold me under my arms and walk me across the monkey bars like you see in like Wounded Warriors commercials. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, I understand he was like trying to help me in his own way, but you know, I just wish he could have waited for my friends to leave. <laughs> it's not like he would have had to wait long. <laughs> I am. Um, I hate smelling other people's food. I really do. Like something about it really drives me crazy. I think I might be uh, jealous. <laughs> anyway, um, I went shopping at Big and Tall lately, right? Big and Tall. Anybody? No applause. All right. Um, but I saw these great things. I saw these undershirts, right, where the whole center of the shirt is made of elastic. And I was like standing there, kind of like contemplating things, and you know, thinking about my life, and uh, the, the sales associate, he sees me, he comes over and he's like, these are popular. Like, you know, like, like, that's what you say when you're trying to sell a young man his first girdle. <laughs> As he got closer, I saw the face, and he was like, he was making the same face that like army medics make when they're trying to not let you know how badly injured you are. <laughs> Just like smiling to the heart. <laughs> You're gonna look great in that girdle. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I always hear from people that shopping is fun, like they enjoy shopping, but uh, Big and Tall is like about as fun as the place you go to buy wigs outside the chemo clinic. <laughs> <laughs> I should uh, organize their ties by a limit, just in case someone wants to hang themselves. <laughs> so, I've been like waking up lately, right in the middle of the night, and it's really been bothering me because it means either I'm haunted or my tits are crushing my lungs. <laughs> I wish I, it was just that I was haunted. <laughs> I went to the doctor, right, and they said that, you know, I need to work out, and I have pre-diabetes. Scary. So I joined the Y, and I joined a, a pre-diabetes exercise class, right, and there's like six other people in the class, they're all over 70 years old. There's one woman, right, she's so old, she looks like she's made of paper mache. <laughs> paper mache woman runs faster than I can. <laughs> Heavier weights than me. She can do like appropriate, all the way, 100% crunches. It's like kind of humiliating that there's all this competition between myself and these people who are just working out so they can look good at like a, a Elks Club meeting or their funerals. <laughs> the casket at its 10 pounds. <laughs> So, I'm working really hard, and I'm, I'm like working really hard, and I'm starting to feel a little faint, and my uh, exercise trainer, she comes over and she's like, you need to do something about your low blood sugar, which is like, you know, the opposite of pre-diabetes. So, the pendulum has swung too far, I have become too healthy. Right? I'm feeling great. My, my trainer, she says that's not accurate. She says that I'm gonna, I'm gonna faint, right? I don't know how I'm supposed to do this, right? You know, getting myself healthy seems impossible. I mean, just keeping myself alive in the first place is like managing a nuclear reactor. <laughs> you guys have been amazing. <laughs>